Hello, Hollywood Times viewers, Judy Shields here. Today, we are so excited to welcome back country music legend, T.G. Shepard. Hey, T.G., how's it going in Nashville? It is going absolutely great. Can you see me and hear me okay? I can see you and hear you. We got okay, a beautiful great. background there. You're beautiful. Oh, well, that's that's the living room to the house, so. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. It, it, it is good. It's good to see you today. That's so good to see you, and uh, I, I kind of hate to see start off on a sad news but i i've got just a lot of tears in my eyes hearing about uh the passing of toby keith and you know i know that you know him and it's just uh yeah. it's been you know, an amazing uh, fight for that man judy when i wake up each morning i always grab my phone to see what happened during the night you know because mm -hmm. uh, the world we live in now is changing rapidly daily and uh I, the first thing I saw was my uh, PR agent told me that Toby had passed. And the strangest thing was before I went to sleep last night, I turned to Kelly. Of course, you know, Kelly Lang, my wife. Yes. And I said, Kelly, I'm worried about Toby. Mm -hmm. That was the last thing I said to her last night when I went to sleep. And then to wake up to that news today was just so hurtful. I mean, it's just gone too soon. Gone yeah. way too soon. You know, and he had to struggle so hard this last year and a half or so. And my heart goes out to his family and the legions of fans around the world that love him because I loved him. We all did. And but he left behind a great legacy of music for us to hear for years to come. I love that bar will always be one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, man. And then Red Solo Cup. Wow. And, and it was I, I like one of my favorites of Toby's was how do you like me now? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, how do you like me? I mean, he was just, he was just an, an, an a blessed songwriter and, and singer and performer. I mean, the song that he did at the award show recently, don't let the old man in. Oh, uh, wow. It was just so poignant when it went to his wife sitting in the audience, you could see her tears. Yeah. And uh, they had to know that it wasn't good for a while, but they probably just kept it to themselves. You know, I yeah. did hear that. I did hear that he had told someone recently that it was OK. He was finally OK with it. You know, yeah. So, yeah so I know he, he sure fight. did fight. And, and uh, I'd love that he came back, you know, and was yeah. out there and, and didn't yeah. let it didn't let it stop him because no. that no. damn cancer. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully someday we'll have a cure for it. We can only keep hoping and praying. But yep. uh, he'll be missed, gone but never forgotten. Exactly. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. So we'll get on to some uh, more joyful stuff. Uh, can you believe, T.G., that it's 40th anniversary just past of uh, Slow Burn? I mean, that's awesome. I love that oh, song. I don't know where the time goes. I mean, really. It seems like yesterday, Judy, that I walked in the studio with my producer, Jim Ed Norman, who was also <laughs> producing the Eagles at that time, um, and recorded that song 40 years ago. Wow, that I, it, I can't fathom that. I mean, I don't know where the time goes, but what a great what a great song to have come my way and and still one of my favorites. Can you tell us a little bit of, about that song? Like how it came your way. What did you think? You know, tell us the process of you hearing it for the first time or, or how does that work? Well, usually when you have a great record producer like I had in Jim Ed Norman, who was the head of Warners at that time in Nashville, um, you've got a guy who knows songs. He's got a great ear. And I've always been a song man myself first and an artist second. And when he played me the song, he says, I think I have found you your next number one song. And I said, Let's hear it. And he played it for me. And I said, Jim, Ed, I think you're right. I said, there's magic in this song, the structure of the song, and it's complimenting the woman. And I said, it, it's just a, he said, well, I'm going to record it like I would if I recorded it on the Eagles. And I said, how? He said, I'm going to use some of those Eagles harmonies behind you in this. And not, not the Eagles themselves, but harmonies like the Eagles. And it just seemed to work. It was one of those records that you record on Tuesday, uh, you release it on Wednesday, and it goes number one on Thursday. <laughs> it was a fast record. And man, one of my favorites to still do in concert. 
Oh, I bet you it's a big request from all your fans, huh? It is. It, I, I think I think that's probably the one song that I get probably as much as any of them when people say, you know, it's their favorite song of mine, but it was a magic song and I, I was fortunate to have it come my way first. Oh my goodness. So did you guys uh, just recently go on uh, the country cruise? Did they have a country cruise recently? They had a country cruise. It ended last week, but we, we were on there last year, Kelly okay. and I were. And so we're back again in 2025. It leaves, I think, January the 19th. You can go to tgshepherd.com and get all the information on that. And um, and our tour information is there too. Um, but it will be on 2025 Country Cruise next year with Neil McCoy. And gosh, there's a lot of artists. There's like 30, 40 artists on that cruise next year. Mo Bandy is on there. Aww. Uh, it, 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 it'll be fun. It, it's it's a great way to do concerts on the ocean. It must be fun out there with all your buddies, huh? It is. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, really and truly. And I, I think that's what it. it's not like work when you're on a cruise ship. It's like a vacation. <laughs> and so therefore, everyone's relaxed. And the pressure is not as great as having to climb on a bus or a plane and get to the next date to do a show. You do several shows on board each week and you're there. You can go to your state room when you're done or you can go have dinner and uh, you don't have to jump on a plane or a bus to go and get worn out before a show starts. And so it's, it's a lot of fun. I encourage anybody that's never been on a cruise, to come do the country music cruise uh, 25 and you can find that online. And where does it go out of? It goes out of Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Yeah. Most of those go out of Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, uh, we'll have to have you come to over here on the West Coast. Well, I have come there before. I did one. I'm trying to think it was the Opry Cruise years ago. Oh, wow. uh, we did one from the West Coast. And uh, I can't remember where we wound up going. But I, I do remember that we, we did uh, the Opry Cruise from the West Coast. Wow. So I, I'm assuming you're going to be out there. Uh, you're touring right now? I'm always touring. I'm I'm what they call a road warrior. I mean, I really, I love home. Yeah. But when I'm home, I'm I'm get itchy to get on the road and get on stage and entertain and have fun. Uh, yeah, I'm touring every week. Uh, we're somewhere almost every week, and to still be able to do this, I celebrate my fiftieth year next year as a country touring artist, and I can't believe that either. Um. To still be able to go out and do that and still have packed houses and the crowds seem to be getting larger and they seem to be getting younger because their moms and dads have turned them on to our music that they loved as the kids were growing up. Yeah. So it's just, uh, yeah, we're, we're busy, busy, busy. That's going to touch your heart, you know, when you see your older fans who've been with you and then you see them bring their, their youngins, that, that must be a special treat for you. You know what really blows my mind is I'll be in the meet and greet line after a show and mm -hmm. these young kids in their teens and 20s will come up and I have watched them sing the words back to me in the audience. And I ask them, these songs were recorded before you were ever born. How do you know the words? And they'll say, well, we grew up listening to these songs. And uh, it's always an honor and uh, it's just a great compliment to have people sitting in the audience and singing your songs back to you. That's wonderful. So how does your day start? Like if you were going to go uh, on a concert Friday night, what would your day be like before your concert and during and after? Well, you usually, if you're busing it, you wake up in the parking lot of a hotel somewhere in the world <laughs> and you go in and your road manager has already checked you in. And so you go in, you grab your key on the bus <laughs> or getting off of a plane. And um, you go in and just uh, kind of relax and uh, maybe take a nap if you have not slept on the bus that night. And then you do a sound check around 2.30, 3, 3 to make sure the levels and everything is right because we all use ear monitors. And then after that, uh, they usually cater in something to eat for the crew and the band and myself. And then before you know it, it's showtime. And man, that's when the magic unfolds. And that's 
That's why you travel all night long and you wear yourself out is to climb on that stage for an hour and a half and feel the energy of the crowd. It's the most, it's a drug. It's the most incredible experience that I've ever, ever had in my life is to feel a crowd that's with you. Do you get a little nervous still today? Oh yeah. Yeah. Not so much doing, uh, the day-to-day -day concerts because you know those so well because you do them every day yeah uh, when you do like the opry the grand Ole yeah. opry or yeah. you're doing an award show uh and you're going live on network tv that's nerve-wracking i mean especially the opry because Ugh. i've been honored to play the opry hundreds of times through the years but each time is like the first time it's amazing the butterflies that you get when you know you're going to walk into the circle where oh. the giants have stood before you and performed and that be honored enough to be able to have the opportunity to walk in that circle and perform is nerve wracking. But it's a, I think it's great for an artist to still get butterflies because that means that it's not time to go yet. <laughs> it's time to keep doing what you love if you still get nervous at it. Yes, and you've given us amazing music and songs. You've got a great voice, and I I watch you on Facebook. You know, you'll uh -oh. Kelly will put some of your stuff out there, and I'm like, God, he's just still got it, you know. And I've got to I've got to come to Nashville. I'm gonna come out there in June for CMA Fest finally this year, and and hopefully you're gonna be out there somewhere where we could follow you around and report about you live. Well, I'll be there. I mean, we really and truly CMA Fest is a big deal here. I mean, it's a deal. I mean, every major artist comes out of the <laughs> off the road to perform, and uh, it's it's just uh, an exciting week of shows yeah. uh, during CMA Fest. And yeah, we're always involved. As a matter of fact, we always do the kickoff to CMA Fest with a benefit show that nice. Kelly and I do each year called called Country for a Cause. Okay. The money all goes to uh, the uh, Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. Oh, uh, to help kids. So we we kind of that's kind of the kickoff to CMA Fest each week or day or so before before CMA Fest starts. So it's always fun for us to be able to be involved with chip, especially with charity work. Oh yeah. Can't wait to see you for that. We'll make sure we're out there covering that for sure. So what else have you been working on? I hear there's a lot of cool stuff going on between you and Ms. Kelly. Well, we are just putting the final touches on a new duet album. And we haven't named it yet. We just shot the cover. And hopefully the cover will lend itself to a title. We uh, started this project, uh, Judy, a year and a half ago. Wow. And we took our time to do it. We picked our favorite songs of the past. We did an, an album years ago called Iconic Duets. And it did so well, people kept saying, when are you going to do another duet album? So it was just time to do one. And so we started it a year and a half ago and we're finishing it up. Our first single comes out this week and we did a remake of the Shania Twain hit, uh, Still the One. And it lent itself to a duet really well. And we had a lot of fun putting it together. So I invite anybody to go to, you know, tgshepherd.com or kellylang.net and to see what we're up to or tour schedules or follow us on YouTube or, you know, Facebook, Instagram. We do all that stuff. Oh yeah, I, like I said, I love following Kelly, and and it leads me to you. So it, it's it's amazing. I just I just love all her all her stories and all. Well, of her. you know, I am very blessed to be married to someone who understands what I do for a living. I mean, yes. what I mean, isn't that fantastic to come in off the road? And Kelly will say to me, "How did the week go?" And I'll go, "Well, this happened or that happened," and she'll go, "Yeah, I remember playing there years ago." And it's just really great to have something that great in common with your partner in life, with my wife. Uh, I love watching her perform. She and I are starting to uh, perform some things together now on the road. And yeah. uh, so I hope people will always come out and catch us if they hear us playing somewhere. Yeah, you two must be so proud of each other when you're up there on stage, right? Oh, I am. I mean, I'm her biggest fan. I mean, really and truly. Uh, she amazes me, not only as a great mom and daughter uh, and friend, yeah. um, 
is a great wife. She's just a, a great lady. I married the girl of my dreams. Yeah. Okay. You tell us a little bit about how the two of you met. It's such amazing. Well, you know what, Judy? <laughs> I have always known Kelly. Yeah, I know. I, I can't remember a time in my life when I didn't have her in my life as a friend. Isn't that um, <laughs> I, maybe she was 13 or 14 years old when I first met her. She was opening up shows for wow. Mickey Gilly and myself and Lee Greenwood. I mean, she was a great singer back then. She was on Star Search, as you know, won yeah. three times on there with Ed McMahon. I, I I can't remember a time when she wasn't in my life in some way. I never dreamed that someday we would wind up being married to each other. Uh, that never, I mean, we still have to pinch ourselves. We've been together 23 years now, married 17. Wow. And we still can't believe it happened. We found each other, you might say, late in life after we both had been married before with children. Yeah. And uh, wow, she is, uh, I'm a biggest fan and I love being married to her and love singing with her. And look at you guys went through COVID together. How amazing. Ooh. I have been through COVID, Judy, five times. Oh my I mean, goodness. Yes. But it seems like each time, and I hope I don't, Jinx myself, knock on wood. Yeah. Uh, each time it seems to get not as bad as it was the first time or two. It's more like a cold, a bad cold. Yeah. So, but we, when you're exposed to so many people on the road and mm -hmm. doing tour and touring and doing concerts, there's that chance. You know, yeah. all you can do is just hopefully have a strong enough immune system that you can get through it each time. And I've been very blessed to get through it. So what does T.G. and Kelly do for fun? <laughs> Make music. Oh, for fun, we're movie buffs. Yeah. We, we have a, a, a big TV screen in the bedroom. Yeah. And I call it, I call it the drive-in. And um, <laughs> I'll tell her, I said, let's go to the drive-in and let's watch a movie. We will watch, we get hooked on documentaries, seri documentaries and series. Okay. We just finished watching um, Succession. <gasps> I'm watching that right now. It is phenomenal. I yes. mean, it just, it just uh, and then of course we love the classic movies. You know, we love movies like Out of Africa and Pretty oh. Woman and stuff like that. And uh, but now we're we're movie people and we listen to a lot of music. We. We'll get in the car and we'll drive around and we'll listen to the radio and we'll listen to other people's CDs. And nice. we, uh, we, we really and truly, uh, each day when we get through with our day and it's time to go with the drive-in, yeah, <laughs> uh, I will turn to her and say, boy, you know, we sure do drain a day dry. I mean, we are busy <laughs> from the time we wake up until the time we go to bed. But I think as long as you're that way, I think you're able to stay healthy. And I think you're able to work as long as you want, as long as you're an active individual. And so we uh, we work. That's our fun. It's just working and listening to music and making music and movies. <laughs> Very good. So our listeners are able to find uh, Slow Burn and all your albums on your uh, website? Yeah, then go to tgshepherd.com or go to YouTube. You can see a lot of videos. We're adding content on uh, our official YouTube page every week or two uh, in a lot of interviews and things that uh, we've been involved with. And then, of course, you can go to our social media pages and uh, catch up on everything on Instagram and uh, Twitter, X. Yeah, and X. I can't be used to that. I mean, and, either. Uh, and Facebook and uh, you know, uh, social media is a wonderful tool. I wish we had had it back in the hot years when we were hot back in the 80s and 90s, but we have it now. And it's yeah. a wonderful tool to be able to reach people quickly and reach them, you know, in the masses. Well, I think, like you say, it's great to have it now because even though back in the day we didn't have it, it's nice for to have it now so that me as a grandma, I have three grandsons. I can't know, believe that. I, I look at you and I can't believe you're a grandma. 21, 14. A oh, he's 21, 14, and five. I have five grands. I mean, three Get grandsons. Out of here. Can you imagine? 21. No, I can't. Oh, my gosh. You know, Bobby Bear, great singer, country singer. Uh, 
legendary artist, told me one time, I said, what have you been doing, Bobby? He said, I've been with my grandchildren. He said, and I loved them so much that I wish I'd had them first. <laughs> he said, because the grandkids come to the house and whenever I get tired, I can send them home. <laughs> so I'm waiting on grandkids, but you're fortunate to have them. Yeah, you know, so it's like I could show them because they're always on their phone. So I'm like, here, you want to see something? Sure. And then I could show them a concert from you or this is somebody I listen. I could tell them the story of how I went to the Grand Ole Opry when I was 13 or 15 yeah. with my dad, their grandpa, and, and how I saw Gigi and, and I met George Jones and Marty Robbins, all these people. And then I could show them, you know, that kind of. And now my younger son listens to country music more now than he ever really? did. Yes. And he's 31. <laughs> wow. See, they love I, Johnny. Yeah. I run into a lot of people in that age group um, on the road at our meet and greets uh, after the shows. Yeah. It's always great to visit with them. I mean, they're, and it amazes me, as I said earlier, that they will sit in the audience and sing along with you and know the words to every song. Uh, that's the new thing now. When yeah. you go to a concert, you hear, you hold the mic out in the audience and you hear them singing it back oh. to, wow, that is so incredible. I was going to ask you about that. That must be awesome. You know, when you stop singing and they continue, you, that's got to be an amazing feeling. It is. And it <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me that uh, the kids nowadays, the younger people in their teens and 20s know the songs. I yeah. mean, as, as I said earlier, they, they were recorded and became number one hits before they were born. Yeah. And <laughs> But it's just they 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 grow up listening to their mom and dad's and grandmother and granddad's music, which sometimes is ours. Yeah. And it's just wonderful to be able to hear them sing the songs back to me. Well, you and Kelly need to come out here and uh, to the West Coast and California and do a concert. I mean, even a, a lot of country folks come out to uh, Laughlin, you know, and you yeah, know. I've played the Riverside there yeah. quite often. Matter of fact, I think we'll probably be coming that way soon, hopefully. Okay, uh, I will definitely. I'll drive there to see you for that. <laughs> I love, I love Laughlin. I yeah. really do. Us yeah. too. So, well, we appreciate the time that you've given us today and uh, we will put all your social media up there. This uh, video will be put up on our YouTube channel, Hollywood times uh, official. So you right. can use that if you want. And uh, it, was, it was a blessing to talk to you and stay safe out there uh, and give uh, Kelly a big hug from me. I will. And the blessing was mine. It's just <laughs> great to hear your voice and see you. And I look forward to doing it again. All right, we will. We'll talk We'll talk more with the two of you when that album comes out, okay? You got it. Thank you. You, you make sure you keep in touch. <laughs> I will. Bye.